Let's talk Garuda and all things that involve killing enemies and, well, killing enemies. That's the goal here and Garuda handles it like the blood queen she is. So, if you've been looking for a Warframe to run and gun with whilst having little survival issues at all, then look no further. Now then, let's get straight to the point, shall we? As always, timestamps added within the video. What are Garuda's abilities for this build? So let's start off with her passive. To put this simply, Garuda gains bonus damage after each and every kill, ramping up to 100% bonus damage to her abilities and her weapons. So keep up that damage output and gain yourself a cheeky little bonus. Garuda's first ability is Dread Mirror. Target an enemy and use your first ability to rip out a shield from them. This shield you'll be using as a way to protect yourself against incoming enemy fire and projectiles. The tip here is that the shield only covers the area you are facing and will follow the direction you look in. However, whenever you aim down sights with a weapon, it will directly follow and not lag behind. This promotes well with weapon synergy anyways, so just go ahead and remember this. Garuda's second ability is usually Blood Altar, but we're actually going to Helmet Subsume here and bring in Sephagoth's Gloom ability, as not only do they both relatively do the same thing and help you get health back, but Gloom will follow you around like a radial aura, whereas Blood Altar is more stationary and requires setup. So let's go ahead and swap this in. Now that we have Gloom, we want to benefit as much from it as possible. Gloom can slow down enemies within this radius around your Warframe, and whenever you damage an enemy within your radius, you will also receive receive a portion of healing as well. Because of this, we want to go and focus strength on our build and slow down enemies with range as much as possible. We can achieve a 95% slow by reaching at least 272% strength. In whatever way that you want to achieve that number, you choose, but slow is fantastic and it helps us survive. From there, Gloom also wants some range and needs a little bit of focusing on energy drain, but that's actually where our next ability comes in. Garuda's third ability, Bloodletting. To sum this up shortly, you basically want to sacrifice your health and get energy back on cast. But what's great here is that the Gloom ability that we just subsumed in uses energy to keep it draining and active. So, so long as you're doing damage to enemies, you're getting health back. Now you can use Bloodletting and get energy back. Do you see the synergy here? They actually complement each other very nicely, so you'll juggle this combination. And finally, Garuda's fourth ability, Seeking Talons. So Seeking Talons for me in this build is what I would personally use for iframes. As soon as you cast this ability, you cannot be damaged, which means it's great for defensive survivability, especially when you've lost your shields and you know that enemies hit hard. So what I would do is just quickly hit this ability, reposition with it, and it also gives out guaranteed slash box onto any enemies within your line of sight. When you pair this with the idea of the Warframe mod rolling guards, it basically means you have a lot of extra ways to survive, providing great safety nets if you need them. So what about that build then? So the main focus is ramping up Gloom and strength will become our first priority for you to push towards. From there, range benefits quite nicely and gives out that quality of life needed for the build. As for duration, it does go really well with your Dread Mirror and it also helps to drain for your Gloom. So let's not hurt that duration in your builds. And for the efficiency, we can keep this nice and low due to Garuda's third ability. So keep that in mind. For my Garuda, I like to put on safety nets of Rolling Guard and Prime Shore Footed as both of these can help survival or even my aggressive mistakes. Combat Discipline mod means that anytime I kill an enemy, my health will get hurt, but Gloom will heal me anyways. So when you keep that in mind and you pair this with Arcane Avenger, anytime your health is hurt from those kills of Combat Discipline, Avenger has a chance to proc, and with enough kills, you will basically keep Avenger up at all times, providing great additive critical chance to your weapon damage output. Chuck in a primed flow to benefit a much bigger energy pool, although flow can also work pretty well here anyways. And as for the second arcane, it's up to you, but I would pair this with a weapon that I like to use. On screen is a build that I use for the Bobonico against Demolitioners in the Disruption game modes. So because of that, I'm using the Arcane Tempo mods and keeping Garuda and Bobonico as best friends to help complement one another. And lastly, we have Garuda's Augment, Bloodforge. Whenever you're using her third ability, Bloodletting, this will actually reload all of your equipped weapons. Yeah, now you're starting to see the synergy of something so simple comes together so nicely, and this build really dominates in Steel Path. So what rotations would you use her for? Alrighty, this is just my rotation, but I would start off by toggling Bloodletting. This gives me energy, and I know that I have shields up to protect me until I can find my first enemy. From there, I would turn Gloom on so that that's 
slow is up and ready. And now I would dive straight into my first enemy with Garuda's first ability, Dread Mirror, provided me with a shield, an AoE slow around me, and enough energy that if I needed to cast Seeking Talents for iframes, then I have the option to do so. From here, it's just a matter of trying to keep your Dread Mirror refreshed as much as you can so that you don't run out. Use her third ability, Bloodletting, with its augment to reload your equipped weapon, which means you can just pump and dump your magazine without a worry. And just make sure you position well enough that you always benefit from the life still around you. A small note to make is that in really big open areas, I think she has a bit of trouble, as the gloom may not reach those long range enemies to slow them down. And if they hit you from the side or from behind, then you will take damage. But that's where my rolling guard and seeking talents come in for my build to help me close down that gap needed towards the enemy and reposition. I mean, the operator is always available as well, so just choose whichever suits you and go for it. But anyways, guys, there you have it. The Blood Queen herself bathing in all her glory and absolutely decimating any enemies who dare challenge her. Gruda has quickly become one of my favorite go-tos when it comes to steel path missions, and rightly so. I mean, look at the synergy. Look at the control, and look at those claws, guard. Die. Yeah, as always, guys, if you enjoyed today's video, then I would appreciate a moment of your time to like, share, and subscribe if you're new. But until next video, I'll see you guys then.